Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series on the Dell PowerEdge R720XD. In this video we're going to specifically focus on CPUs, but in the series as a whole we're going to cover memory, hard drives, NVMe, how to install VMware, how to update your iDRAC from Express to Enterprise, uh, how to install a Windows operating system, plus a whole bunch more. So click that like, smash that subscribe, let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R720XD. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on CPUs. So, hey, let's just hop on in. Uh, the 720XD has two CPU sockets. It's an LGA2011, which means it takes Intel Xeon E5 2600V1 and E5 2600V2 series processors. I will note that the V2s, do, or in order to use the V2s, you need to have an updated BIOS, and updated firmware. Um, if you're trying to install them and running into this issue, uh, that is likely the problem. Problem. Um, and if you don't have one, you can order a V1 for a really cheap price, uh, put it in. Uh, you only need one of them. Uh, update the BIOS, update the firmware. Uh, if you're not sure how to do that, we're actually going to do that later in the series. Um, and so we can show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that. Uh, and then your V2s will work, okay? Uh, people ask us all the time, hey, what CPUs do you recommend? And uh, really, it, it kind of depends on what we like to build with. And it depends on what application you're doing and what you need. So we've kind of broken it down into three tiers, uh, the low end, the value, and the high end. So on the low end, there's the E5 2660 the E5-2670, and the E5-2680. All these are V1s, and they're eight cores. Uh, the top one being 2.2, uh, uh, followed by 2.6 and 2.7. So all of them great options, uh, just depending on how you know what speed you want is really the difference between those three. And all of them are great for if you're on a budget. Okay. Uh, now, if you want something a little bit better, and you go to the value procs, these are also still very uh, inexpensive as a whole, um, but they're going to cost a little bit more than uh, the uh, the low end. Uh, but again, they're not going to break the bank. And uh, to me, this is kind of like my favorite group that we like to build with. But it's going to be the E5-2660. V2, the E5-2670 V2, and the E5-2680 V2. And the 80 uh, V2 is my personal favorite, uh, and that's going to all be 10 cores, uh, being 2.2, 2.5, and 2.8. And the fact that the uh, 80 V2 is a 2.8 is really uh, why I like it the, uh, the most, is because you're getting a 2.8 and you're getting you know 10 cores. You put two of those in and you have a 20 core box, and that's a, a great solution. And again, not going to break the bank. Okay. On the high end side, you have the E5-2690 V2. E5-2695 V2 and the E5-2697 V2. All these are also great pro uh, processors and processors I like to build with as well. Uh, they are going to be a little bit more expensive than the values, but again, overall the V1s and V2s at this point aren't at a terrible price point and you can get some pretty good deals out there. Um, so I would definitely recommend checking out some of the other uh, high-end ones and you might be able to uh, to get a deal. I know right now, for instance, we're running a special on the E5-2695 uh, E5, uh, V2. So, uh, But anyhow, the uh, the 26 90 v2 is going to be a 10 core uh, whereas the 95 and 97 v2s are going to be 12 cores. Uh, however, the 90 is going to be the fastest because the uh, E5 2690 V2 is going to be uh, 3 gigahertz versus 2.4 and 2.7. So again, depending on what you want, uh, the 90 might even be uh, better for you because you lose two cores, but you get a faster proc. Again, depends on your application and what you're looking for. Okay. All right. So now that we know a little bit about uh, the different processors uh, that we can use um, and which ones we recommend, uh, let's go ahead and actually uh, install one and up upgrade one of our boxes. All right, now that I got my ESD gloves on, we are safe to open the machine. So uh, I've laid out everything that we're going to need in order to uh, do this upgrade. So obviously the CPUs themselves, which uh, we're going to be installing E5 2695 V2s, uh, one of my personal favorites. Uh, we're going to be taking out the V1, so it's going to be a pretty big uh, boost in performance overall. You're going to need a, a screwdriver, just a simple Phillips head. Uh, you're going to need some thermal grease to put on to the uh, the new CPU and a uh, rag or something, you know, whatever your choice to clean the old CPU. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, get started. So first things first, just pop the latch just like any machine you've been in before. We're going to remove the air baffle. And for the uh, sake of this video, um, you don't have to remove the uh, the fan bank at home, but we're going to remove it just so that you have a uh, better access uh, from the video standpoint. So we're just going to go ahead and pop this up real quick and take the fans out. And now we'll just have a little bit uh, better view for you here. So um, we're going to go ahead and uh, do um, CPU2. 
And uh, first things first, just grab your screwdriver. I like to do um, kind of a zigzag pattern where I'll do about halfway up on this first screw. And then I'll stop and come over here and I'll go all the way up. And one of the reasons I like uh, to use just like a regular screwdriver as opposed to uh, an electric one is you can really feel it actually coming off the board. Um, so I have a real sense of uh, what's actually happening and how the screw is functioning. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and remove the heat sink now that we've got it unscrewed. And uh, one of the things I wanted to point out, this isn't too bad, uh, but there's some thermal grease here. Uh, we're definitely going to need to clean it before we reuse it. I'm going to clean it off screen because you don't want anything to just fall into the machine itself. Um, and then we're going to need to clean the uh, the old CPU. Uh, some people don't really care and they just take it, especially since it's a V1 and it's not really going to be reused again. Just take it and throw it to the side and I get that. I'm just more worried about uh, cleaning it so that uh, other stuff inside doesn't get uh, thermal uh, paste just flaking off. So I just want to get a quick uh, rag on it and just make sure everything's good. So. So we've got this cleaned, and you can see this will be uh, great to reuse again. And then we're going to go ahead and clean this off nice and gently. There's really not too much on it as a whole, but uh, this was nice and easy to get it cleaned off. So, All right, so now we are going to uh, actually access the CPU itself. Um, this is uh, fairly simple. Um, you're going to go to step one over here, you're going to push this latch down and out. And then you're going to come to latch two and you're going to push down and out. And when you do, you'll notice right here that when you lift this up, you're essentially releasing the actual um, case around the CPU socket. So you just push this down and it's going to pop up and you can have complete access to the CPU itself. So, and you can even see right now on this, even with as careful as we were being, uh, there is some uh, old thermal paste that has gotten in there. So I need to be careful when I'm pulling it up just to make sure it doesn't accidentally fall into uh, the, uh, the pins inside because that would be worst case scenario and that's what we're trying to avoid as a whole. So um, the other thing I like to point out right here, you can grab the CPU uh, a number of different ways. I don't like to grab it like this. I like to grab right here just because there's more uh, surface area to grab uh, and there's a little bit of plastic right here that's kind of blocking you so I prefer to grab it right here. I'm just going to lift it straight up uh, and make sure that you don't grab, accidentally um, drag the end. Uh, I'll see where someone will kind of grab it like this and the end will uh, wipe out just a row of pins so just be real careful and lift it straight up and then uh, since we have thermal paste on it that looks kind of flaky I'm gonna air below this real quick alright so just to be extra safe uh, we're gonna go ahead and just grab this and this is just you know a normal uh, duster that you'd see so I'm gonna just uh, shoot some of this off and in general I don't want it to get on to some of the other stuff so I'm just gonna kinda give it a good good cleaning All right, we're in much better shape right now. I saw it all blow onto the ESD mat over here. So we're gonna simply just lift this straight up now. So just grab the CPU and come straight up. And again, I just say like this and don't accidentally, some people will uh, kind of drag that corner. And when you do that again, you can wipe out some of these pins. Uh, and there are a ton of them in here, literally 2011. So you wanna be very careful uh, not to accidentally mess them up. So now I'm gonna take our old CPU, I'm gonna put it into the tray grab our new CPU which is going to be a E5 2695V2 um, and so you're going to notice right here on the CPU there's uh, a gold triangle and if you look on the motherboard there's a white triangle essentially you're going to match these two up and that's how you know uh, the which way the CPU should face so now I'm just going to drop it in and when I say drop it in, obviously I mean set it down very carefully. So I come straight down. Um, I'll see sometimes people will pin it to the side and kind of come down almost like a hinge. But whatever you do, this is where you need to be careful because you don't want to wipe out a bunch of pins, okay? So I just drop it straight down, nice and easy. And now I'm going to go ahead and close this back up. And we're going to do the fun, messy part. We're going to put on a bunch of thermal grease. I shouldn't say a bunch because you don't want to put too much on because you don't want it to um, get all over the place. So I'm just going to do a nice little area in the middle and that's about it. Um, some people do more, some people do less. I'd say this is about average. So 
um, that is what I will roll with. And then when we uh, put the heat sink on, it's going to uh, kind of smush the uh, thermal grease, which helps spread it around. Uh, some people will get the, uh, the, the little plastic brush and, and spread it. Either way works just fine. Um, and you'll notice that uh, we did clean the heat sink in advance uh, just to make sure. So now we're going to put the heat sink back on. And simply screw it down. And you'll feel it when you're screwing it, tightening to the board. And again, I like to go halfway here and then flip flop and then go all the way over here. And you'll feel it tighten. And then you know that you are done. All right, so it was just that simple. Uh, one of the main things I'll say and some of the main takeaways is you just have to be really careful uh, with the pins. Uh, but as a whole, this is a, a really easy upgrade that you can do at home. Uh, and then uh, everything we do after this point is just putting it back together. So uh, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Uh, do us a favor and uh, click that like and smash that subscribe. And if you're looking for any custom built servers yourself, please email sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Uh, we do new and used uh, Dell, HP, Supermicro. Uh, we custom build uh, Gigabyte, ASRock, uh, Tyan, Azus, you name it. Uh, so give us a chance. Appreciate you stopping by.